Well, British Iranian mother Nazanin Zaghari Ratcliffe says she's suffering panic attacks and sleepless nights over the Iranian government postponed a second court case against her with no explanation. Nazanin has been detained in Iran since 2016. She was due for release next year, but has been told she faces new charges. Her husband Richard joins us now. Um, Richard, this is an agony for Nazanin, uh, and it's an agony for you and your daughter, of course, as well. She was due to be released. Do you believe that these charges are uh, simply a political attempt to keep her behind bars as some kind of warning to the UK government? Uh, yes, good morning, Susanna. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. That, uh, as you say, Nazneen is coming to the end of her sentence. We've always been complaining about it and been complaining on your show, but she was coming to the end. Uh, and then last week, she was summoned to court and told that she was going to have a new case that was going. Um, and then that case, which was supposed to be heard on Sunday, got postponed. So it's felt like it's been a real game of cat and mouse um, and that we're sort of stuck as a piece of cheese in the whole thing. Um, certainly, behind closed doors, I've been pushing the government hard to, to really protest strongly about what's going on and to try and get down and, and go and see the case. I, I think the fact that they pushed so hard, really tried to attend the trial, is, is part of the reason why I got postponed. So, yeah, last week was looking very bleak. Sunday wasn't as bad as we were fearing, but, but we remain right in the middle of, of this game. I mean, Richard, this is an ongoing nightmare for your family, isn't it? I can't even imagine the psychological stress mm. on all of you, but particularly your wife, that she was looking forward to hopefully coming home to you and your child and out of nowhere, the hell suddenly gets worse again. Look, I think that's right. She wasn't quite counting down the days, but she was certainly counting down the weeks. And, and, and all along I'd had like the worst case scenario her, for her was that it would be this whole five years. Um, and yeah, it, the uncertainty of, of which you know, people are playing with their lives, a life and can invent a new case as and when to signal to the UK that they're not happy. It, really hard, really hard. And, and as your quote, Stan said, like she was uh, oddly re not relieved when the case was cancelled, but actually really angry as to, to what are they doing and why are they playing these games. And, and I don't think that court case has gone away that was supposed to be on Sunday. It will come back in a few weeks. So we live with the uncertainty of the sort of boomerang coming back and, and us, as I say, being stuck in a game of cat and mouse. Richard, if she goes to court and if she is convicted, how much longer would she have to spend in prison? I have no idea, is the honest answer. I think it could be anything. Um, the, the charge that she was uh, being talked about, uh, spreading propaganda against the regime, is not a huge long charge. Um, if you remember, this case was uh, revived back in 2017. Um, at that point, they were talking about doubling her sentence. I, I think it's a warning shot. I think, as you say, it's political. So it will be for a while longer, but it, it's probably indeterminate. Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister, made things immeasurably worse with his clumsy rhetoric, uh, early stage of all this. He's now the Prime Minister. Do you feel that he is actively engaged in this case and trying to make up for the mess that he created? Look, I think I've, I've said since um, Boris Johnson became Prime Minister, certainly since the recent events, the government really needs to take responsibility. Um, Nazneen is being held uh, as a um, collateral for a dispute between the UK and Iran. There's no ambiguity about that whatsoever. Uh, and the government needs to take responsibility to protect her and protect the others who are being held. Boris is the Prime Minister, so it's, it's on his shoulders to sort this. Richard, we wish you all the very best. It's uh, your dignity and how you stay calm throughout this is unbelievably impressive. Mm. And I just, when I heard this news, it was, I felt sickened by it. I can't even imagine what you felt, and let alone what Nazanin felt. But we wish you all the very best. Hope the government is watching. Hope the government will act on this and hope the government will get your wife back where she belongs. So, mm. best of luck to you. Thank you for covering us. Yeah. And you have a little girl who needs a mum home. A Foreign Oof. Commonwealth and Development Office spokeswoman said, we welcome the deferral of this groundless court hearing and call on Iran to make Nazanin's release permanent so that she can return to her family in the UK. Horrendous situation.